among my favorite bourbons, uh, which change regularly as the flavors change. Sometimes you like one thing more than another on a given day. These things always vary. But as a whole, Rye Mash Bill 1 is one of my favorite flavors. It shows itself in Buffalo Trace, Eagle Rare, or George T. Stack. Uh, the Stacks in particular, his cast strength, uh, are very rich and varied. Uh, I love when that works. A lot of the Four Roses I've picked over the years have also uh, been outstanding whiskeys with a great deal of complexity that uh, I especially enjoy. Uh, current favorite scotches vary from our Mortlock 25 year single barrel to uh, maybe a committee art bag over the years. There's a Lefroy that's a 30 year old that's especially good. It's first fill bourbon fill, uh, first fill bourbon cask for 15 years, then it's dumped into another first fill bourbon cask for another 15 years, giving it 30 years of aging in two different barrels. It's uh, remarkably bright and fresh. My favorite five whiskeys for beginners, I'd say is uh, Buffalo Trace because of its richness and balance. And I love the counterpart of uh, Kentucky Spirit versus Russell's. Same mash bill, different alcohol, and uh, different flavor profiles, even with the same mash bill. So it kind of gives you a point counterpoint. Elijah Craig's are always rich and dimensional. They've got a little bit more barley, and it shows a better mid palate than you often see in other whiskeys. Finally, of course, Weller is a weeded bourbon. It's uh, an outstanding quality when, uh, when you can get it. I always recommend downloading a uh, flavor wheel. You can get that off of Google. Every subject has a flavor wheel, with scotch, bourbon, tequila. Um, with the flavor wheel, you can get a range, it's a graph, and with the graph are flavors that are articulated or are specifically listed that morph into other flavors. So it gives you an idea of how flavors work together. Uh, I recommend that you pick three whiskeys and uh, Take your notes over the three whiskeys over a, a period of time, make, following them in the same sequence so that you can follow how the flavors evolve over time. But with the flavor wheel, it give you a conventional vocabulary to be able to articulate and identify flavors. Once you've done that enough times, you're kind of slowing down the pitch, kind of training wheels, and it gets easier to identify what's going on. At first, the process can be a little intimidating, but over time, uh, it's welcoming and it's exciting. Some of my favorite finishes for bourbons right now are cognacs or ports, but I'd love to see more rum as a finish. Uh, I'm particularly interested to see what Madeira would do as a finish, as well as Calvados. I haven't seen much of Madeira or Calvados in, uh, in bourbon finishes.